Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm excited to do. It's going to be a bit of an updates video. So a couple weeks ago, I posted a video on untrustworthy makeup products. And I was talking about products in my collection that I still like and use and enjoy, but you want to use them in a very specific way, maybe on a specific day when the moon is in a specific phase. Otherwise, it's not going to look so good. I mentioned that a couple years ago, I posted a video kind of like the opposite of that one called Safety Net Makeup Products. And I was talking about the products that just never fail me no matter what. I know I can trust these products and I'm going to look great when I wear them. And I got a couple of requests asking to do an update on that video. Where are they now? Do I still have them? Do I still trust them? And I thought that that would be a great idea. So my safety net makeup products video was posted in October of 2017. So this is going to be a two year update. I'm going to let you know what I think about the products. Do I still have them? Do I still trust them? Do I still trust those brands? Where are we now with some of these products? Hmm? So if that sounds interesting to you, why don't we go ahead and get started. So it was really interesting when I was going through the list. I feel like I had about almost like half and half of products that I still have in my collection and products that I no longer have. So it was really funny to look back on that video. And of course, it's always funny just to like watch your older videos and kind of cringeworthy at the same time, but it was still fun. Uh, oh, also, I did want to say I do have a little Instagram tutorial on this look if you are curious about it, and I do always, also, always link my makeup in the description box. So first up that I mentioned in that video was a foundation, and this foundation has been a holy grail of mine for a very long time. This is the L'Oreal True Match Lumi. I just adore this foundation. It's a drugstore foundation. It's nice and affordable, and it has just been a favorite for, obviously, I mean, that video was posted two years ago, and it's still a favorite of mine. This is a fairly newer bottle because I have gone through it in the past also, and I just continue to repurchase it because it continues to be a favorite foundation. So definitely the L'Oreal True Match Lumi still a safety net product for me. Another foundation on my list, and this is one that I no longer have in my collection, that is the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation and Concealer. I do remember having quite the love affair with this foundation. I decluttered it fairly recently. I'm trying to think if I decluttered it before our move or if it was like right after. Uh, but I got a ton of love out of that foundation. I used it so consistently. I do feel like there's other foundations that I just like a little bit more are still some of like my, you know, favorites that I continue to repurchase like the L'Oreal. So obviously I wouldn't say that one is a safety net like favorite product of mine, but I got a lot of use out of that Clinique one. I really enjoyed it. And I was mentioning that I liked it a lot for, um, like events like weddings like i wore that foundation to so many weddings i recommended that foundation to a lot of my friends who were getting married too because it was such a long wearing foundation i just think that over the years i've kind of understood like my, my skin type a little bit more what finishes i like on my skin and that one was just a little bit more mad on me so there's just a few others that i have found that i like even more uh, a concealer that i had on there was the tarte shape tape so obviously the tarte shape tape like took over the beauty land when it released and i really did enjoy that concealer too i do no longer have it in my collection um i i, I mean i love that concealer i use it every day i mean obviously if i put it in this video i was like truly quite obsessed with it but i don't know i i do have a couple other tarte products on here i kind of went through like a phase with tarte where i was just really not very impressed with a lot of different things that they were doing i just was kind of like Ugh. and so i scaled back i've you know i've done the same thing with Too Faced too like if i'm just like not feeling something i'll just kind of like scale back and you know not purchase as much so I did use my shape tape all the way up and then once it came time to like am I going to repurchase it or not I was pretty much still like on the outs with Tarte so I was like you know what I'm not going to and while I do like I, I still do remember like I can remember enjoying the shape tape I feel like if I had it in my collection now I would still like it but again the, there's other concealers that I repurchased and that I just enjoy so much more so I wouldn't consider the shape tape a safety net product anymore either and then the next one i had on my list was the gold digger palette from pure cosmetics i laughed so hard when i saw myself hold up this palette because i just remember being so in love with this palette and this palette would come everywhere with me if you guys don't remember these vanity palettes i think is what they were called from pure they were just like these little circular palettes and they would pop up and you could use it like they're like the circular part was a mirror and you could actually like pop the mirror up too so it almost looked like its own like true little vanity 
And then inside you had different eyeshadows and a bronzer, a blush, and a highlight. I mean, I took my Gold Digger palette with me everywhere. I mean, traveling, just friends' houses, like for a sleep a sleepover, you know, things like that. I loved that palette though. Um, I did declutter it recently also. It was just, it was just one of those things, like it was time to say goodbye. Um, I, I definitely now am not quite, I'm not quite as much into the kind of like all-in-one palettes as I used to be. I definitely still like them and I still have some of my collection and I still reach for them, but I used to have, like there was a point in time where I just went into them a ton and it's kind of cut back a little bit. But man, I really, I really did love that that product, let me tell you. And then another face palette that I had on there is one that I do still have in my collection. That is the Becca and Jaclyn Hill Champagne Pop uh, Face Palette. So this is the palette where inside you have three different blushes and the two different highlights. I do still really enjoy this palette. Obviously it has stuck around in my collection for a very long time. I did recently rank my face palettes. I can link that video down below and this ranks very, very highly in the rankings. It's just still one of those like fallback products for me. I just enjoy it so much. The blushes, the highlights, I love the mirror. And then a brow product that I mentioned which kind of made me smile too is from Benefit. This is the Goof Proof. This is what I have in my brows today. This particular one is what I pulled into my September Shop My Stash shopped my stash bag because um, this is the shade 2.5 and Benefit just recently came out with like a brow uh, extension for a brow shade extension hello and uh, 2.5 is one of the new shades and it matches me really really well so I decided to put it into my shop my stash bag but yeah the goof proof and also the Benefit precisely my brow those continue to be two of my holy grail brow products they just do not let me down like no matter what I just know that I can have a good brow day when I use these pencils. So yeah, I definitely got got a bit of a smile when I saw that one on my list. So an eyeshadow palette, this one is so funny to me for a couple of different reasons. So I put this eyeshadow palette on the list. I smiled when I saw it. It's from Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's the Modern Renaissance palette. Okay, one reason it makes me smile is because I feel like you can really see what was trending in the like online beauty community industry at the time with like the tart shape tape the mod run like you know that sort of thing that like, you can definitely see where it is and that's why i enjoy posting these update videos i've done like um you know coming back to like my old sephora hauls like uh, am i do i regret stuff that i purchased do i still have in my collection like old favorites videos and doing updates and that sort of thing and i actually had to do like a where are they now on my filming schedule i just didn't have anything like particular in mind to do so that's why when people suggested the safety net i was like that's perfect uh but it's also fun to see like what was so hot in the community two years ago and do you still have that around like did it make it through so that i think is funny but another reason i think it's funny is because i actually mentioned anastasia pellets in my untrustworthy video so that i thought when i saw this on my list i was like "Ooh, that is interesting the reason why i said i thought the anastasia pellets were untrustworthy is because they do have a little bit of a different formula they're very like you just need a very small amount of the products they can be a little bit more powdery and i feel like they're just so pigmented which can be a good thing or a bad thing kind of depending on who you are and what you like with your makeup i mean we're all different so that's fine but i tend to be someone who i've learned like with my eyeshadows i like i like shadows that are a little bit more buildable versus more pigmented right away because i'm not a makeup artist i'm not a blending queen or anything like that uh, so I like a little bit more buildable. I can take my time and really build the shadows up versus going in with too much too quickly and then I have kind of like a blotchy mess and I can't blend it out. And I have realized over time that I think the Anastasia formula, if I am using her palettes like really consistently, a new one has come out and I'm trying to do a bunch of different looks with it, I kind of fall into like, okay, it's good, it's fine, I know what I'm doing. But if I use other palettes and then I come back to an Anastasia, I can get a little bit too heavy handed with the shadows. So that's why I mentioned them being untrustworthy. So I thought that that was really funny. But like I said in that video too, I still really enjoy the Anastasia palettes. I still continue to purchase them. I still have like five or six in my collection. So I still really do enjoy these. I just thought it was funny. That was the only uh, the only product that overlapped between the two videos, which I, th I thought that was pretty darn interesting. Let me tell you. Another palette. Oh man, this is where I said I had a couple different Tarte ones in here too. I put on there the Tarte Clay Play palette. I loved the Tarte Clay Play palette. And you know what is so funny? The day that I'm filming this, which is Friday, and I'm not exactly sure when this video is going up, but 
I'm filming this on Friday and this morning I was watching a video from Jen Loves Reviews and she was talking about um, like her favorite palettes like of all time. So she had a lot of like older palettes in there and like limited edition palettes and such and she actually mentioned the Clay Play and it was so funny because um, she actually mentioned me at some point too because she talked about the Clay Play 2 palette which I'm about to get into and she said I heard from my friend Samantha March that like the Clay Play 2 was not good and I even commented in there I was like oh the Clay Play 2 Clay Play 2 palette debacle still makes me so angry because Tarte released the Clay Play and I probably should have scooted over a little bit because I'm going to be inserting photos of the products that I don't have to show but they released the Clay Play and I was such a huge fan of it it had contour and bronzer and highlighter and it was a really gorgeous palette and I was just like all for it I was telling everybody to buy it and then Tarte came out with the Clay Play 2 and it had blushes in there and I was like yes I'm so excited I'm even more excited for this one this is gonna be great and I ran out to buy it and that one had a whole huge debacle behind it. It was one of the things that started to kind of turn me off from Tarte a little bit. It was just, oh, it just made me, it just made me like kind of mad. Like I, I felt a little bit duped as a consumer when that came out and really it was like one of the things that started to frustrate me about Tarte. So I still look back at the Clay Play 2 and just think like, I <laughs> just like get angry about it but man I sure did love the clay play but honestly like it, the whole situation just made me so mad I, I ended up decluttering it. it it's no longer in my collection I just the whole thing just kind of bummed me out so <sighs> There you go. Another eyeshadow palette that I had on my list was the Jaclyn Hill palette in collaboration with Morphe. So this was the very large palette that she put out. I do obviously still have it in my uh, collection. I I was, <laughs> uh, kind of brings up sad memories too. I was super excited to get this. It was actually sent to me. This was my very first item I ever received in PR from Morphe. I was on their PR list for a short time and uh, I am no longer, which is fine. Um, and I was just so excited. I, I cried when I got this palette, you guys. I mean, again, the safety net video went up two years ago. I I was just so excited about this. Now I do still have this palette. I still have kept it in my collection because I do think it's great. Uh, this actually was also mentioned in Jen's video. I will link it down below um, if you haven't seen it yet. She actually also did mention this video. It is a really great palette. You have so many different colors that you can work with. The formula in here is absolutely beautiful. Uh, and it does, like it really does still continue to be, you know, a, a staple palette in my collection. I go back to it quite a bit. And it's just, it's just a nice one. If we're talking about safety net and untrustworthy and all of that, my thoughts kind of changed a few times with some of the situations that have happened, which bums me out. But I still have held on to this palette because I still do really like it. And you know what? I like I like the good memories that are tied with that palette. You know, I, I try not to hang on to like the negatives too much and whatnot. And looking at that palette, I truly can remember being so excited to get it and just, you know what I mean? So... I'm gonna hold on to it and choose to remember some of the good times, right? Okay. Alrighty. So moving on, uh, some different lip products that I had in here. One of them was the Maybelline Truffle Teas. Oh my goodness. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know how much I loved the Maybelline Truffle Teas. Truly the Maybelline lipsticks, just like their regular bullet lipsticks from the drugstore, had been some of my favorite lip products, I mean, for years. And I was just constantly recommending the lip products, especially in like drugstore, affordable videos, back to school, beginner makeup, starting a makeup collection, all of these different things. I was always recommending the Maybelline lipsticks. I have gone on to, to find a lot of other lipstick formulas that I really do enjoy and you know I, I, I repurchase a lot. I think I've pretty much decluttered all of my Maybelline lipsticks now but I still do think the formula is really nice. It's just kind of these days I have found others that I tend to prefer. I also went through a pretty huge liquid lipstick phase where it was like all I was wearing was liquid lipsticks. I am kind of getting more into the bullet lipsticks right now and really getting into lip gloss which was a huge change also but um, yeah I mean I sure did love my truffle teas. I mean it was, it was a new obviously it's what other color would it be but I sure did love that one then a liquid lipstick that I had on there was this one from Huda Beauty this is the girlfriend lipstick so the liquid lipsticks I think Huda Beauty launched eyelashes and then I think it was lip products and uh, I purchased the liquid lipsticks kind of like pretty quickly I don't know what it was I was just really curious to try them out and I first purchased a set that had two mini liquid lipsticks and then a full size lip liner and I went on to just really enjoy the formula again this is another one I was recommending all the time I was wearing so much 
and it's funny because I mean I had like eight or nine different shades at one point minis full sizes like it didn't matter like I have them all and it's funny because I've decluttered most of those liquid lipsticks but girlfriend is still sticking around so I thought that was pretty pretty funny because I mean this definitely is my favorite shade it's just a nice nude pink uh, again I've been kind of getting off liquid lipsticks just a little bit more these days I've been wearing the bullet lips and again the lip glosses quite a bit uh, but I still really do enjoy this formula and I have you know kept around girlfriend through a lot of different declutters uh, another li lipstick that I had on there, this was another liquid lipstick. This is from Kat Von D, Bow and Arrow. I really did love Bow and Arrow. I had a mini, I had a full size. I thought it was a great shade, a little bit darker. I, I liked the liquid lipstick. Kat Von D's liquid lipsticks didn't like totally, like I didn't love all of them, if that makes sense. The very first liquid lipstick I purchased, which I'm pretty sure was Lolita, which was a super popular shade. I didn't love it and I think I actually returned it. And I was like, I don't understand. And then, I don't know, somehow I got to bow and arrow. And I just don't know if it was the color that I love so much or maybe if the formula was different. But I really did love that shade. And I mean, I don't know what you want me to say here. It's, it's, it's one of those tough things. Sometimes you just have to make personal calls of what it is that you want to continue supporting. And, you know, like I said, with the Tarte, I mean, even with Morphe, Jaclyn Hill, oh, and Too Faced, like just other brands, you know, if there's things that you just don't feel... I'm really happy about I mean the biggest way that you can voice your you can voice your opinion or, or whatnot is by where you choose to spend your money so if you don't support something I say don't put your money there if you don't support someone online don't watch their videos like you know what I mean like your view and your dollar and all of that like that's really how like you're voting or that's how you're giving your opinion or whatnot so um, I have decluttered the Kat Von D from my collection and I don't purchase from the brand anymore so Let's just move on. Um, so from Tarte, I had on there the Rum Punch lipstick. So this was one of their Rainforest of the Sea lipsticks. I really, really enjoyed their lipsticks. I actually do have one in my current shop, my stash bag right now in Salt Life. This is my Rum Punch. <laughs> like I just need to finish this off because there's just like a tiny amount left. Uh, and I, I, I was a big fan of this formula too. I recommend it a lot of these lipsticks. I had a lot in my collection at one point too. Um, I still do really like the formula, but again, Tarte was one of those that I just kind of like went off with a, a little bit. I'm, I'm slowly like, I don't, I don't have as strong of feelings anymore about Tarte, but I just, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm just kind of more like indifferent right now about them. I haven't seen anything that's really caught my attention or made me want to, to purchase, but I'm not like as, I don't even want to know if I want to say I was like anti tart because I didn't think I was I never really get that fired up about something like usually right unless something like really really upsets me but I don't know I'm just gonna finish off rum punch because it just needs to happen like I just need to go through it uh okay almost done so a lip gloss that I had in there was from Marc Jacobs this is sugar sugar man did I love my sugar sugar I have a mini and a full size of it and this was like this was my favorite gloss before I even enjoyed lip glosses right this was being like so hyped up on youtube that even though i was like i don't really care for lip gloss i was like yeah i'm gonna go buy you know like a high-end luxury lip gloss in marc jacobs it seemed to make sense luckily i did think it was a really fantastic lip gloss like thank goodness if because whoo i think i bought it in like the vib sale first is what i want to say and then the mini came in like a lip set that i used to purchase quite a bit too uh it's not my favorite gloss anymore right now there's other glosses that like especially since i started getting into lip glosses those other ones have definitely kind of replaced this one so i still think it's a good one and i still reach for it like from time to time but definitely there's other ones in my collection that i like even more and then lastly i had on there some makeup geek eyeshadows which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, again, Makeup Geek, I mean, when I was really like first popping onto YouTube, Makeup Geek was like all the rage. All of these Makeup Geek videos, my favorite Makeup Geek singles, like those were just like huge hits. And I literally was like a student like taking notes of the different shadows. Uh, so this is my cute little Makeup Geek singles palette that I have put together. I recently did a really large single shadow declutter. These are the ones that I kept from Makeup Geek and I made my own little like nine pan magnetic palette in here, which I, I think this is super cute. And the four shades uh, in particular that I mentioned in my safety net video was Peach Smoothie, Creme Brulee, Coco Bear, and Shimmer Shimmer. And they made it through my like huge a single shadow declutter and I have some other ones that I've added to my collection. I do definitely still enjoy the Makeup Geek uh, single shadows. I'm not really a single shadows 
type of girl these days. I really do tend to prefer to go with my palettes. That's why I did that huge declutter, but I still really like a lot of these shadows. And again, it's why I wanted to make kind of like my own that little, like little like perfect nine pan palette, if you will. So yeah, um, that is what I think about the makeup geek. But after that, that those are all those, those are all of my safety net products that I mentioned two years ago and what I think about them now, if I still have them, do I still trust them like I once did? I would love to know your thoughts though in the comments for sure. This one was so fun. Thank you to everyone who wrote in saying that you wanted to see an updated video because this was a really fun one to look back at and, you know, see what was, you know, super popular in the beauty community at the time and what has kind of made it through these past two years. So yeah, other than that, uh, if you guys enjoyed today's video, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up. I hope that you also consider subscribing before you go and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Bye.